Matthias Marcellus Clay, the champ, aged 24, in his own view, the greatest and the prettiest, but as others see him, the loudest and the brashest, arrogant, boastful, sometimes hysterical. It used to be easy, uh, talking and saying, I am the greatest campaigner for the title. Now I am here and everybody else is trying to take my title, such as this fellow named Henry Cooper in London and uh, all of these fellows are trying to get my title now. And it's no longer fun getting up every morning early to run and training every day. It's getting to be a grind and a job, but it pays off if you're in condition and if you can keep winning. I have so much on my mind as you have been reading all type little problems, you know, alimony and matrimony and divorce and uh, draft board problems and uh, it didn't really get me down, but uh, it's just taking a little time to uh, forget about it. So Clay works out his hate. For him, perhaps, the punch ball symbolizes all those who seem to conspire against him. Those who demand tax and alimony, the public who sneer at his Muslim faith, the draft board that wants to send him to Vietnam. He turned professional six years ago, becoming at the same time a Muslim and taking the name Muhammad Ali. In his adopted religion, he's said to find his only refuge from a world that's too often seemed against him. His father once told him, you'll never be rich, look at the color of your skin. But if he's fought for riches, he seems reluctant to fight for American beliefs in Vietnam. He wasn't even prepared to discuss why with Peter Woods. Well, I'm not saying nothing about that. I don't want to say nothing. It, don't, it won't help me to say nothing. And, uh, and it'll help me not to say nothing. So you're not prepared to discuss your feelings about the Vietnam War? Mm. I have a let's turn um, away from that subject, but more to the subject for which you're better known. A lot of people tend to think of you as being bombastic, the showman of boxing. Uh, how much of this is an act and how well, much all of it that, really is you? Well, all the talk, like for an example, the last time I fought Henry Coop, I was saying that he must fall in round five and that's no job. Little rhymes, I am the greatest, I am the king. The things that I was doing, they were only campaigning to the title. I saw in 1960 when I turned professional that I had a hard way to go to beat all the top contenders. So I had to overshadow them, predicting and being blessed and successful enough to fulfill my predictions and uh, <clears throat> calling the rounds and writing poems and weigh in disturbances and, and challenging my opponent on the street. And this was controversial and it was colorful. And it, I overshadowed all the contenders and the promoters are the ones who promote the fights and who put up the money. Well, I was a bigger draw than Eddie Machen at the time, than. Uh, uh, many top contenders, so this threw me right into the championship fight, and I won, but that was only campaigning. Like a mayor, a man running for some office, he walks the streets, he picks up babies, he shakes the hands, he campaigns. Then when the man is in office, uh, it's, hard, it's hard seeing him. You need a necktie, a, a suit, or an appointment. And he settles down to the right, job then. Right, so I'm in office now, I'm the heavyweight champ of the world, and I don't have to talk no more and say I'm the greatest, because people tell me I'm the greatest. How long do you expect to stay heavyweight champion? Mm, well, uh, <clears throat> I'll say this. I really believe this is not campaign talk, this is for real. I don't believe that the man to beat me haven't been born yet. I'll be champion. I can stay in the ring 10 more years, easy, I figure. His ranting and raving, his association with extremist Negroes, and his attitude to military service have all made him unpopular. He is hero now to few. Well, I'll tell Henry Coop, if he's watching this show, to come to the fight and be ready to fight because I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to London to get you. And after I'm through beating him, I think you'll have to join the Beatles and be a singer. Mohammed, thank you very much. You're indeed. welcome. I'm coming to get you, Henry. I don't like the way you knocked me down the last time. <laughs> no man knocks me down and get away with it. So you be ready for it. You hear? Be ready because I'm coming to get you. <laughs> and you go home and tell him that. I'll do that. I'm man. not joking. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, I'm gonna get him. Knocking me down. I don't, I've been wait. I read some in the paper where he, he's dying to get in the ring with me again. Well, he'll get his chance. He, can you imagine him dying to get in the ring you with me? You used to predict the round uh, before when in your 
showman type days. Do you still do that? He'll be dying to get out of the ring with me, too. <laughs> <laughs>